Welcome back to Honest News. I'd like to uh, test your knowledge of the Word of God. And we're going to go to a chart that, uh, that we put together here. And um, I want to test your knowledge. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, as I share with you this, this chart, and we go over this chart, I'm not going to share scriptures with you. And the reason being is because you that have knowledge of God's word, you that have the word of God, um, the Holy Spirit will bring those scriptures to your remembrance as we're going over this chart. Um, it, you know, if, if you're not at least to the place where, uh, where when I share these things on this chart, if you're not to where the scriptures are coming to your remembrance and you're understanding where we're, what we're talking about, looking at the chart, you're not going to understand the chart anyway. So this really is for those that have a knowledge, a working knowledge of God's word. This is a test for those that have that have a knowledge of God's word, okay? Um, but let, let's go ahead and begin with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the awesome privilege to know the truth, to understand truth in this hour. Well, Lord, our objective is not to do everything for your people and to do their own, their homework, but Lord, to test their knowledge, to make sure that they are sharp, to make sure that they're ready, Lord, that they know the Word of God, that they understand the Word of God, and that they are being established in the truth, rooted and grounded in the truth, that they have a working knowledge of the Holy Scriptures. We pray, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon this time, and we plead the blood of Jesus Christ as we minister, Lord, your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this is, this is the chart, okay? And at the top, at the top, what we see here at the top is the pre-tribulation the mid-tribulation, and the post-tribulation. Now, when I mention these things, you should already have a working knowledge of the scriptures. Pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation. And what that does is that gives us a time frame, okay? This gives us a time frame. First on the list is the bride then the wise virgins, and then the foolish virgins. When I mention bride, there are certain scriptures that should come to your remembrance. You should have a working knowledge of who the bride is. If you still think the bride is the church as a whole, then you don't understand the truth. The wise virgins are those coming out of the church, or those that are, I should say, let's say this the other way around. The wise virgins are the church as a whole. The bride is coming out of the church, okay? So what's left after the bride is taken in the pre-tribulation, uh, being caught up in, in pre-tribulation, well, what will be left is the wise virgins, okay? And then when the wise virgins are taken up to be with the Lord in the middle of the air, then the foolish virgins will be left. Okay, we know that the foolish and the wise virgins will be together in the mid-tribulation. We know that in the middle of the tribulation. But the foolish are going to be left behind from the wise. Okay, so the bride's taken first, then the wise virgins, and then the foolish virgins will be beheaded. Notice the, the foolish virgins are not going to be caught up. They'll be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The bride will escape all these things. Okay? 
Scripture should become to your memory when I, when I share with you, the bride will escape. What scriptures come to your remembrance that have to do with escape? The tribulation, three and a half years, the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour, of the whole seven years, that's what the church is going to be experiencing, the tribulation for three and a half years. Uh, and the great tribulation is what the foolish virgins will experience, but the bride's going to escape all of this. Okay? Watching and praying. This is what the bride will be doing right now. This is, this is where we are right now. She's watching and praying that she might escape. The church, on the other hand, is sleeping. Right? The wise virgins, they're sleeping. So aren't the foolish virgins. They're sleeping. Okay? Now we look at the watches, the first watch between 6 and 9 p.m. That's where we are right now, between 6 o'clock and 9 p.m., which is dusk or sunset. It's not fully dark yet. It's getting there. It is getting there. Uh, but uh, before it gets dark, the bride will be taken out. She'll escape. And then it's going to start getting very dark and up all the way to midnight while the church is still here, the, vir the wise virgins. Remember, the reason why the wise virgins are going to be left behind after the bride is taken is because she's asleep. Okay? And uh, that's during between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock midnight. Remember, what, what this, what's the scripture in, that talks about midnight? At midnight, okay? Uh, there was a cry made. So, let's see here. The third watch, is, is it's going to get real bad. We can see here that the foolish virgins, they have no oil in their lamps. They have no oil. And so they're going to go through great tribulation the last three and a half years of the seven years. They'll be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is the third watch. Okay? And if we, if we notice here, the marriage of the Lamb takes place in the in first watch between 6 and 9 p.m. Okay? That's the pre-tribulation. The mid-tribulation, the wedding feast. Now, this is what I want us to look at. I can't hardly find anything on YouTube of anybody that even remotely that talks about the marriage of the Lamb. You don't hear any ministers dealing with the marriage of the Lamb. You hear a lot about the marriage feast, but you don't hear anything about the marriage of the Lamb. That, that just doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't there be any talk of the marriage of the Lamb? And the only thing I can think of is that the church, they think they're already the bride. They don't realize the scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. And it's not the chosen that become the bride of Christ. It's the faithful that become the bride of Christ. So there's no mention of the marriage of the lamb, but yet the scripture talks of the marriage of the lamb and the wedding uh, feast. So why isn't the church today being taught that there's a marriage before there's a wedding feast? The marriage will take place Pre-tribulation in the first watch, okay? First watch. And the marriage or the wedding feast will take place in the second watch, mid-tribulation. These are the wise virgins, the marriage feast. Now notice I put an arrow here going over to judgment and wrath. Because this is the marriage feast. 
This is the marriage or the, or the wedding feast right here. Judgment and wrath. Okay? But during this time, the church is going to be in the wilderness for three and a half years. Okay? Protected from the face of the serpent. Now, while the bride of Christ is rejoicing in heaven, the church will be experiencing great persecution. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. The devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Okay? He knows he has a short time. Great persecution will come to the church. This will take place in the mid-tribulation. Middle of tribulation. Does that make sense? So the church, the church will be here for the beginning of the tribulation hour. Okay? The bride will escape all. I should have put all here. Watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. Okay? <clears throat> and those that are the foolish virgins that are going to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus, we see that in the last three and a half years <coughs> of the tribulation hour is going to be whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not going to be good. This is where the the seals are released. This is where the trumpets are, are sounded. This is where the thunders. Okay? I hope that helps to uh, clarify some things for you. Because I hear nothing at all about the marriage of the Lamb. Nothing. And I still think it's because most believe, most ministers and people out there believe that when you get saved, when you're born again, you're already the bride of Christ. Will you show me the scripture where it says that? There is no scripture that says that when you're saved and born again, that you become the bride of Christ. That's just lazy. That's all that is. That's lazy. All right? So yes, there's a marriage. There's a union. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. There will be a union. Then there'll be the marriage feast which is judgment and wrath. All right? I hope that makes sense. I've tried to lay it out as simple as I could possibly lay it out. Here's the first three and a half years. Here's the last three and a half years. That makes up what? The seven years, right? That's the complete seven years. Some people believe that the Tribulation begins at that, that the bride of Christ will be here for the tribulation hour. But that's what Jesus meant when he said to watch and pray. See, while the church is sleeping, what's the bride doing? She's watching, first watch, and she's praying. Praying that and, and Jesus said she'll escape because she's watching and praying. All right? The bride and the wise virgins are not the same. I'm going to say that again. The bride and the wise virgins are not the same. The bride is the bride. The wise virgins are the wise virgins. And the foolish virgins are the foolish virgins. I think it's pretty simple. It's pretty plain. Not sure where people get confused. How can you get confused looking at this? That's it's pretty pretty plain, I think. Let's see if I'm missing anything here that I wanted to go over. I I, I think the thing I'd like to focus on is this. Rejoice while the bride is in heaven rejoicing. Woe to those that are on the earth and the sea. And great persecution will come to the church. When the devil saw that he was cast into the earth, he 
persecuted the church, the woman that brought forth the man-child. But as I share these things with you, the scriptures should be coming to you. Right? The Holy Spirit should be bringing scriptures to your remembrance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But here you have the first watch, the second watch, and the third watch. Pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Okay? That's pretty, pretty plain, I believe. If you know someone that's struggling with the, with the understanding of this, get this video to them. If, if you have a family member or somebody that doesn't understand these things, I'll tell you right now, brothers and sisters, I wouldn't want to be here. I wouldn't want to be here during this time, never mind. But I'd rather be, if I had to be, I'd rather be here for this than to be here for this. You got people out there teaching that the church is going to go through the great tribulation. That the church is going to be here during judgment and wrath. The truth is, is that the bride will judge herself worthy of eternal life. She'll judge herself and escape all these things where the church will be judged to some degree because she slept. Okay. But then these these are going to be judgment and wrath. Wrath upon the wicked and judgment upon, uh, the, uh, upon the foolish virgins. Judgment and wrath. Okay? So don't think that the mid-tribulation where the church is, is great tribulation. That's not great tribulation. That's the beginning of tribulation. It's not going to be as bad at the beginning as it is in the last three and a half years. So I hope you understand that. I'll let you look at the uh, chart a little bit there. <clears throat> Praise God. I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. Been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join hands with Jesus as we travel this song. I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. Alleluia. All right. Praise the Lord.